Since 2005, a new battlefield has emerged in Europe's fight against climate change. In the boardrooms of the EU's biggest firms, company directors now discuss greenhouse gas emissions in the same hard-nosed business terms as balance sheets, shareholder dividends or annual reports. The reason for this change is simple. Thanks to the European Emissions Trading Scheme, which began operating in January 2005, carbon dioxide emissions are now a tradable commodity. They can be bought and sold in exactly the same way as any of the other thousands of products traded on world markets every day. The emissions trading scheme works by placing a limit or a cap on the amount of carbon dioxide companies can emit every year. At present, around 10,500 European installations are covered by the scheme, and each has been awarded an annual quota of carbon dioxide emission units. One unit equals one tonne of CO2. Firms that emit more than their allowance must either pay a very hefty fine or buy surplus allowances from companies that manage to stay below their limit. The system ensures that overall CO2 emissions from the plants covered are cut in the most cost-effective way. Over time, the total number of quotas available will be reduced, making CO2 credits an increasingly scarce and therefore expensive commodity. The idea is that as the price of CO2 rises, companies will prefer investing to ensure that they produce less greenhouse gases rather than paying for emissions allowances. And of course, firms that make these kinds of investments can offset at least some of their costs by selling their unused emissions credits. Emissions trading has received widespread support, not least from environmental protection groups. Thomas Wines works for Climate Action Network Europe, whose members include Green Campaigners, Friends of the Earth and Greenpeace. The emissions trading scheme is one of the most powerful instruments for reducing CO2 and greenhouse gas emissions. Indeed, it limits total emissions by setting a ceiling for the European Union. On top of that, there's a market price for emissions allowances for authorized quantities of tons of CO2. Since 2005, the emissions trading scheme has been operating under what's known as a learning by doing phase. This start-up period is drawing to a close at the end of 2007 and permits us to review how the scheme has worked and where it can be improved. This first phase was important because from 2008, the European Union must start delivering on promises it made at the 1997 Kyoto Climate Change Conference where it committed to reduce its greenhouse gas emissions to 5.5% below 1990 levels by 2012 at the latest. Without a properly functioning emissions trading scheme, most experts agree it will be very hard for the EU to respect these engagements. So what are the lessons learned so far? One key finding is that the scheme can only work effectively if EU governments realistically restrict the total amount of carbon dioxide emissions they make available to companies. Governments set these overall limits in documents called national allocation plans. And it's generally agreed today that the plans for 2005 to 2007 were too generous, a situation that led the price of a tonne of CO2 to fall below 50 cents too low to provide a real incentive for companies to invest in clean technologies. Scarcity of allowances is essential for having a positive uh, market price. And we need a positive market price so as to drive into the economy the right technologies to make entrepreneurs making the right investment decisions. And that's now what is being addressed. Uh, we have had national allocation plans for the second period. The Commission took decisions up to now. More than 20 decisions have been taken. That means that the market is established for the second period. And we observe that the market prices today are around 20 euros per ton of CO2. So that's uh, not too bad. With so-called futures deals already being done for the 2008 to 2012 trading period, the Commission's strict stance certainly seems to have paid off. Sarah Stahl, who works for the Amsterdam-based European Climate Exchange, one of the EU's biggest marketplaces for trading CO2 quotas, explains. The price currently for the phase one is 45 cents. So, uh, quite big difference if you look at phase two, where the price is 19 euros 75. If it's so cheap to emit a ton of CO2, only 45 cents, you know, 
why does company have to do anything? It's cheaper to go on ECX and, and buy the tons you need than to make a huge investment in your factory to clean up your, your dirty technology. And the traders themselves seem to agree that CO2 emission credits are now changing hands for a realistic price. A EU allowance price of around 20 euros, I believe, is a very credible price. Anything between, let's say, 10 euros and 25 euros uh, should be a credible price. If it goes below 10, then there's a lot less incentives to start investing in clean technologies. And how do firms taking part in the scheme view emissions trading? With sites across Europe and the rest of the world, oil company Shell is one of the biggest firms covered. Its plant here at Pernis, near Rotterdam in the Netherlands, is Europe's biggest oil refinery, treating a staggering 800 litres of crude oil every single second. The company says emissions trading has brought carbon dioxide well and truly into the boardroom. We now know that uh, our raw product has a price, the uh, energy we have to use has a price, but CO2, the emission, the, uh, also has a price. So it's now part and parcel of doing business in, uh, in, the, in this refinery. Over the coming years, there are plans to expand the scheme. One area that's likely to develop further is the clean development mechanism. This is an already functioning strategy which allows EU companies to offset some of their greenhouse gas emissions by helping to finance the emergence of environmentally sound industries in developing countries. Here, for example, Dutch firms have helped fund the construction of a power station in India that's fueled by plant waste. There are also plans to include more industrial sectors in the emissions trading scheme. At present, it covers major sites like steelworks, cement factories, some chemical works, oil refineries and power stations. But the European Commission is keen for the scheme's scope to be widened. Recently, for example, it called for the aviation industry to be covered. And there are plans to extend the trading scheme to cover more greenhouse gases as well. Nitrous oxide, for example, which is over 300 times more dangerous for the climate than CO2, has already been highlighted as a probable candidate. Dutch chemicals firm DSM, which makes nitric acid for the fertilizer industry and runs plants that emit nitrous oxide, says it would welcome such a move. DSM are very interested in uh, um, having this uh, nitrous oxide into the European trading system. In fact, Together with, uh, with the Dutch uh, Fertilizer Association, we requested uh, to our government to have this uh, inside of the system. If you put it into the system, there is the, uh, there is the ability that if you uh, reduce the emissions, uh, let's say further than uh, the benchmark level, you have actually an option to, uh, to create a, a value for your own company and get uh, the money that you put into the investment, you can earn it back. Many EU governments also appear to support the principle of expanding the scheme. But experts stress that it will always suit certain sorts of companies more than others. In some cases, different strategies for reducing greenhouse gas emissions would be more appropriate. Which is why emissions trading is by no means the only policy the EU has at its disposal for tackling climate change. Julia Williams-Jacobs of the Dutch Environment Ministry explains. Basic economic theory says that there must be a a bottom line where uh, the cost can never be uh, earned back. And we don't know exactly where it will end. Some people think maybe you can even put households into the system. Most people say or think that that will be taking it a bit too far. But the larger sectors uh, like aviation, tra large transport, uh, ocean going vessels, that kind of things look quite possible. Uh, by promising candidates. Europe's emissions trading scheme was designed from the outset to be compatible with similar initiatives that could soon emerge in other parts of the world. This is because climate change is a global problem that will only be resolved by global solutions. The EU is definitely leading the way on, on this. Uh, everybody looks at the EU for this, for, for how emission trading uh, works in, uh, for climate. And Australia is seriously discussing uh, an emission trading system. The United States is seriously discussing an emission trading system in the Congress. Uh, and uh, those are the two main countries that are outside Kyoto. 
The battle against climate change certainly hasn't been won yet, and no one should be under any illusions. There's still a great deal to be achieved. But with a properly functioning emissions trading scheme, working alongside a series of other innovative policies on climate change, the EU looks well on the way to making good on the commitments it made a decade ago in Kyoto.